Yeah. Get to those trees there, Andy. Those trees on the knob there. My whole thing for all of this, my number one goal is let's get everybody success, specifically those who have the least amount of experience first. Leah had hunted for one day. Denver hadn't hunted in 20 years. You have Erica who has never hunted big game before. And then for Nelson and I, just getting out here and, and being out and having this experience. The trophy aspect is the lowest portion. The shared experience would probably be next in the pyramid and then fill in the freezers. Oh, uh, hold on. We got some more deer, I think. Yeah, they're still there. I'm not seeing the buck, though. Oh, yeah, they're just in the field, so they're climbing up. How far? 690. That's game time. way over here. The least important part of this whole hunt is me. There's like four more. Are they all feeding up the same thing? Oh, dude, there might be. I think there's a good buck in there. There's right. two bucks. Left. Well, let's just take our time. For me, it is about being out here and sharing the experiences with the people that we're with and trying to sustainably and ethically harvest meat for the freezer that you can stretch out through a year and share with friends and family. That's what it's about for me. And again, if it ended up having a, a trophy rack as you walk up to it, Awesome, but also completely irrelevant. All right, Leah, come here. Sit down, down, down. Your dope is good. There's a round in the chamber. Just, all you have to do is the safety. Wait till you find them in the glass, though. You got them, sweetheart, whenever you're ready. Nice oh, yeah. hit. Yeah. It's going down. There's a bunch of does standing up on the ridge, though. So let me get a better range for you. You see them up on the ridge? Yeah, that buck's dead. Good shot, Leah. This is the beauty of suppressors. Oh, man, I can't believe it. So just to the right of her, actually, right now, is the head of another one? Yep. Okay. That front one is for sure a doe. Okay. Oh, yes. good shot. Really? She's tumbling. Oh, yes. Nope, that's not mine then. That's just another random go in, yeah. And, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Leah is tagged out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You did so good. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> How's it feel, Leah? Really good. It's our first buck. <laughs> first buck, yeah. I didn't think I, I definitely didn't think I was going to get one the first day. We walked over there just coming around that ridge and seeing both of them, you know, not far apart lying there and being able to help process them and, you know, hike out with the with the buck head on my pack was that was pretty pretty epic. It exceeded all my expectations. But just knowing how hard it is to make that happen and for her to be able to do it, but I was happy being done with the trip at that point. up across western Montana and it comes after a record-breaking day of warm temperatures. <laughs> well this is interesting. Yeah this is not something I've ever seen before. These wind gusts are projected to surpass 60 miles per hour in some parts of our area tonight. Well, the winds picked up, obviously. I mean, that's that's the problem is the wind. It just all of a sudden seemed like it hit a re breaking point for the tent. As the winds are not showing any signs of slowing down. It shouldn't have ripped the way it did, but just the pressure that the poles at the aftermath, the poles were bent, the tent was ripped. It was just as gnarly as I've ever seen.
once that rip happened, I knew we were in for it. So from then forward, it was just a matter of saving what we could in the tent. Yeah, I saw it was up to 48 knot gusts on my uh, on my inReach. At that measurement, I'd, I have no idea what that looks like, but I know it, I know wall tents don't stand a chance. We're gonna get back to a, a nearby town and we're all gonna sit down and have a cup of coffee and some breakfast maybe, if it's still breakfast time. So we have two options. One is a pretty affordable, like because I can get two tents from Eric, bust up to the pass by Rose, set tent tonight, and it'd be like a dark, we'd be setting up. We have all the gear to do it. We just wouldn't use my tents, obviously. It'd be pretty eventful with um, the, the views. The other option is today we hang out. How much windier it gets today. We either get an Airbnb or hotel. Are so if hotel Rose, rooms near Mariah's Pass? No, it is remote. It's gonna be beautiful. Like the type of running will be, um, it'll be big country. There's grizzlies. I'm not saying it's not possible. Right. I'm saying in terms of complexity, we're adding a layer of complexity by doing Correct. that versus like, well, we just find a hotel here and we go back out where we know there are animals. Yeah. Why I'm voting to stay is because we know where the game's at. It's like, it's fire right now. The deer are chasing does. It's, it's target rich. Okay. Find the wind. I can find, them all. Like, really be careful what we bite off. Like you always have to consider that. And if we had gone the path to the Alpine area, we would have gotten replacement wall tents, which we would have had to set up at night and having never been able to inspect, do they have all the pieces? Do they have everything that we need? The temperature would have been much colder. We would have been in the snow. And I think the decision that we made was the correct one is to stick with what we know. We can manage the drives. Let's find check somewhere Thursday, local. Yeah, check so where is that? Like what's the... Uh... It's about 50 miles from here back towards the brakes. It's oh, off the road good. a little bit though. That's great. It's not going to save us that much time, but it looks like it's a bigger place with more space. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Getting back, refit, rest, recover, eat food, and then we went out the next day and had a bomber day. Dude, that's a nice spot. That is a nice spot. Oh, yeah. Could not believe that when I looked around. Them. I was always taught, and I've always been under the, the school of thought, that take everything back to baseline zero every single time because you never know what's going to present itself. We're literally leaving camp, and within 30 seconds of being in the car, I look over to say something to Nelson, and there is a majestic mule deer buck staring at me through the window. So I slam on the brakes, and all I needed to do though, because I knew I was on my zero, was to pop the scope covers off, put a round into the chamber, acquire my sight, and then squeeze a round off, which is exactly what I did. So I was talking with Leah and Nelson in the car, and we were kind of tallying who had had success so far. And we all settled on, we wanted to get Erica the first shot when we got there. We, my whole thing for all of this, my number one goal is let's get everybody success, specifically those who have the least amount of experience first. So take your time. Worst case scenario, we let her feed and she'll come out. Whenever you get comfortable, just slowly squeeze. Yep, perfect shot. Just running in the right direction of the truck. Seeing the smiles on other people's faces is so much more enriching to me than doing it myself. It was very grounding, but it was definitely, I felt very connected in that moment. Walking down that hillside, it was exciting. It was like you're looking for, you know, this animal that you've put down. And there was something a bit ancestral about it, you know, like being able to hunt and harvest my own meat is something I've always wanted to do. That's definitely deer. Yeah, you want to go get them. Do 
you see him? Yeah. Okay. So straight out. He's standing just there. Uh, you see Denver the took a very varsity level shot on that deer. It was about 450 yards. I would call that a full value wind at about 20. And his bullet moved about a foot and a half from where he was aiming. So it shot out and arced to yeah. the right. Yeah. The wind's going left to right, so I would hold as you're viewing it. As you can see him on the left ass cheek, on the outside edge of the left ass cheek. He's down. He just went down. Yeah. Double lungs this deer at 450 in high wind, and then we find it right up at the top of the hill. So amazing shot. Andy, I'm going to take a doe. We come around a corner, and then Nelson, there was three does and a buck, and I just handed Nelson the rifle over, switched back to the different ballistic profile, ranged it for him. He dialed that in, dropped a, a doe. Hit. Dropped it. Down. He wouldn't handle that. We wouldn't found Denver's buck, collected back up, and walked back to the trucks. I mean, I don't know what else you could possibly want for a day of hunting. Four animals on the ground, two bucks, two does. I mean, it's pretty much how you do that. Every person in the group, to include the guide, was able to get an animal on the ground of their choosing, which is just awesome. Maybe the simplest way to say it is, you know, within a year the meat will all be gone, but years from now we'll still be talking about it. Specifically that tent. Nelson will never live that down, ever. But we will be laughing about that until we're old and gray, and that deer meat will be gone long, long before then. And I think that's the power of the experience over the physical item, whether it's a, you want to go after a trophy animal, which go for it, or you're just out there to fill the freezer, the stories of both of those remain. <laughs>